One of the greatest pitchers in Little League World Series history uh, made her way to Hampton University and now stars as a softball uh, athlete for the Lady Pirates and is here today to talk with us about her experience at her HBCU uh, life as an athlete, uh, as a college athlete during COVID and everything else Hampton University. Monet Davis joins us today. Ma'am, it is a great honor to be with you. First, um, tell us how your experience has ha at Hampton as an athlete has been within COVID you guys last played a game or at least in, in terms of, of, of competitive in-conference game March 8th and what has life been like in the last year or so um I mean it's not really what I expected uh especially you know graduating high school and then expecting like expecting just to have the whole four years um and then it just be cut short uh because of the virus is just something that you can you would never dream of you would never see um, so it's been different, but, you know, I just got to take it day by day, making sure that I'm safe, making sure that, you know, once we go back, like my body's ready, no little injuries because I didn't do anything the entire year that we've been off. Um, but I will say when I was there before COVID, I definitely had a lot of fun. Um, the girls on the team were amazing. Uh, the girls in my dorm were amazing. Uh, the classes were good. So. I feel like if it wasn't for COVID, I would still be enjoying the time. But the time that I did have there, it was, it was amazing. It's tough because you would imagine, I think from the outside looking in, when, when we think about students and, and socialization and all the things that, that you're missing just as a, as a kid on a college campus and all the fun. But athletes, it's, it's tougher, as you mentioned, because you year round have to keep your body in shape. You year round have to be academically sound to remain eligible to play. Um, are those kind of the conversations that you have with coaches, with your teammates about how to do that when it's so tough, when you, you more often than not, you're off by yourself or at least not with your team and not with your university? Um, I mean, for me growing up, I've always played three sports. So year right. round, I've just been playing sports. Um, so when I'm home, I find little things that, you know, I enjoy that'll help me stay in shape. So like playing basketball games, um, even just kicking a soccer ball around, like just making sure that I'm using different muscles. Um, so it's not really, it's not really too hard for me, but I do have a lot of baseball teammates um, who were home and we would go hit and go field um, throw. So it's not like I didn't have anyone around me who couldn't do the things that I, I do at school. Um, but it is different. You know, you don't have the coaches there to, you know, explain things to you. Um, you know, to, to show them your swing and uh, have them, you know, talk about some issues that you're having. Um, so that is different, but at the same time, baseball is kind of similar to it. So I do have people that I can do that with. Um, but each coach is different, so you can't really, can't really judge them. Can't really judge them, uh, like judge every, I mean, you can't really, how can I say it? Can't really put one coach against another. Um, right. So from my baseball coach, he's going to tell me things for about my swing um, that he thinks that I should fix. But at the same time, he'll be like, is there anything different like that? Coach Angie's telling you that you should do. Right. Um, so those, those are two, two different things. So if that happens, usually I'll, you know, just think back to what we were doing on campus. Um, or if I have a question, just you know, text Coach Angie and ask her, you know, what, what can I do to, you know, become a better player? You know, it, it, it's interesting. I thought about you a couple of weeks ago. We, we're hearing all of this stuff about athletes who are choosing HBCUs, right? Like top tier basketball players, football players. Mm -hmm. And I feel like people forgot, like Monet Davis did that first mm -hmm. <laughs> a while ago. Like this was a top tier athlete that chose an HBCU. Do you ever think about it like that? And like you kind of set this trend, but you don't get the you don't get the glitter for it. You know what I mean? Um, see, I'm the type of person, like, I like to do things, you know, quietly. Mm -hmm. Um, so I don't like to be all out there, like, oh, I did it first, this and that, like, that's not who I am. Um, but like, if you're a true sports fan, you know, stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. it's not something that should be in the spotlight all the time. Like, yeah, you see, you know, these top basketball recruits talking about HBCUs, football recruits talking about HBCUs. Um, which is good. Don't get me wrong. I, I love to see it. Um, and I'm happy that it's happening. I know. So me and my baseball teammates, a lot of us go to HBCUs and 
we just were just like, well, it's one of the best decisions, so I hope they enjoy it as well. But all that, like, I did it first stuff. I, it's, it's not. I don't. That's not me. So I don't try to talk about it. You know, you, you know, you did it first though. <laughs> Thank you. <I> appreciate it. <laughs> so you you talked about some of your teammates from from the Little League World Series team there at Black Colleges. Has the experience been the same? Like as much as you have enjoyed it, have you gotten the feedback that they've liked it as well? Um. Uh, yeah. I mean. So when one of my good friends, when he first went, he goes to Southern University. Um, so when he was down there, he was having the time of his life, like just having so much fun. And I was just like looking like, how are you having this much fun? Like, but like, I'm such a homebody. Like I, for a long period of my time, like of my life, like I didn't really leave my house. Like I was always just by my mom, like home, didn't want to stay in anyone's house. So like when I first started going away, it was a little hard um, just because I wasn't used to being away from, you know, my family. But then once I got to college, I was like, well, I don't really know anybody. Like, I got to make new friends. And I was like, how is he doing this so easily? And he was just like, I, he was just like, I just go and just have fun. Like, this is a time that, like, you don't want to waste. And after he said that, I'm like, yeah, you're right, you're right. And then just start going out. But he's having a great time down there. He has another one of our teammates down there, and he was saying how – so he went to LaSalle. Mm-hmm. And he was saying how that was, like, once he went down to Southern, he's, like, the best three days I've had in my – like, since going to college. Like, my whole time at LaSalle, this is way better, and it, I've only been here for three days. So I was, like, <laughs> crazy. Like, whatever is going on down there, I need some of that. But a few of my teammates go to Dell State. They're enjoying it as well. Um so, I mean, everyone's having a good experience. We hear so many, you know, things about homecoming and uh, just just events that only HBCU alums and students could, you know, really bond together with. So it's amazing here how much fun that they're having and uh, that they're enjoying their college experience. When, when you're a top tier athlete, talk about that college selection process. Um, I know that you and your family were intentional about looking at a variety of different schools, HBCUs to be included. Um, I know you're very socially conscious and that's part of it. But when you're somebody that, you know, you know, everyone is looking at you, you know that you're talented and that you are a sports commodity. How do you kind of drill down to, to understand like, what is a good fit for me? As you mentioned, you know, there's a certain way that you run in your life. You're kind of in the house. I'm cool being there. How do you know that or what made Hampton feel like it was a fit for your personality and for your talent? for me when I was looking at colleges I would just say I wanted to choose a place where you know I you know just felt comfortable felt like myself and I decided to do softball so late so I was very limited to schools that I could that would you know accept me um for on the softball team so we just sent out a bunch of emails everywhere like (laughs) basically any college you can, you know, think about. We sent emails there just to get a response. And we got a response from a few of them, but a lot of them already had their 2019 class, like, recruited, done, signed. So I was like, all right, like, this would be a lot harder than I thought. Um, And then Bethune-Cookman and uh, Hampton got back to me. And my coach is like, my baseball coach at the time, he's like, all right, do your research on these schools. Like, he's like, make sure they have what you want to major in, um, check the student body, check the roster, um, you know, just go from there. And I was like, all right. And uh, I did my official visit down at Bethune-Cookman. And I was I always picture myself, like, can I see myself at, at a place? And that's not a place I could see myself. So I was like, like, this isn't me. But I had to take the, the visit just so, you know, visualize things like that Mm -hmm. um and then when i uh went to hampton it was for a camp at first and it was it was it was fine it was hot but like i didn't really get a feel for the campus because there was it was like a sunday and no one was out no one's usually out on like a sunday um so i was talking to the coach and i was like yeah like I really enjoyed it. All the girls are nice. Like the way you guys want things, I enjoy. It's just like how I was growing up, how the coach style was. Um, and I was like, but I would need to, you know, see like the campus more while it's in class, like students, like walking on campus. Yeah, to see um, that 12 to 2 before you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, You like you got to see things like that. So right. 
um, we went down during homecoming. It was me, my mom, and my stepdad. And homecoming is just so, so different than what people would expect. So I was like, got down there. There's so many alumni there, um, current students, kids from other schools, adults from all over. Um, so when I got down there, met a few people. Um, and it was just like, everyone's just so welcoming. Like, I was like, this is something that I want, you know, someone like people to make me feel like I'm at home when I step on campus. Um, and the team was just, they're very family oriented. So I was like, yeah, that's something else that I want. Um, and then I also picture myself, like if I'm not playing softball, would I still be at this school? Mm. Um, that's something that I always think about. And I was like, yeah, I mean, Hampton has everything that I, that checked off my box, especially journalism with the Scripps Howard School. So um, it just had everything and it felt comfortably, I felt comfortable on campus. It's like a five and a half hour drive. So if I ever need anything, like anything, my mom could always come down. Um, Had a lot of family friends around as well. Um, So I felt pretty safe there. I felt like if I ever need anything, I had people that I can call. Um, so it was, it was one of those things, like once I checked off my boxes that I want in the school, it was like, that's the choice for me. What was the transition like from Philly to Hampton? Um, Philly is a, is a much different city. Um, and just from my experience, you know, being at Morgan, Philly, people love Philly <laughs> It's hard yeah. for them to, to not talk about it, not be around it, not be there. Yeah. And, and for you as an athlete, that's a little bit tougher because you kind of got to be there. You got to be at Hampton to do what you need to do. Mm-hmm. Was that a tough adjustment or was it relatively easy because of all the good things that you encountered on some of your visits early on? Um, I wouldn't say it was too tough. Um, just cause, so I moved out to New Jersey, uh, in like middle school. So like I knew, um, what it's like to be in the city and to be out of the city. Um, mm. But, you know, Philly, there's just so much to do. Like, you can just walk downtown and there's, there's so many people out. Like, you can go to a bowling alley that's downtown. Like, there's just so much to do. But in Hampton, it's like, that's not how it's like. Everything is, like, pretty far. You got to drive places. There's not, like, a go beach, like a, <laughs> yeah, there's not, like, a like a sports team nearby where you can just right. go to a game. Um, so that was different for me. But other than that, I... Um, I like to, you know, I really like to enjoy, like, the presence of friends. So, like, making memories with friends, just having a good laugh. Um, like, that's something that I talk about with my friends now when we talk about college, like, just all the laughs that we have. Um, but, like, just not being able to, you know, like, walk somewhere and be in the city, like, that was that was a big challenge. But, you know, once I, you know, got my good group of friends and it didn't really bother me that much. To, to look at Hampton as one of the nation's top HBCUs and look at the student body as being very outspoken on a lot of what's going on in society today, uh, have, you, have you taken or embraced opportunities to, to lend your voice to that conversation? As you know, we look to athletes a lot to, to use their platform and use their, you know, the, no, the notion that they've traveled and been many places and seen a lot of things. So when you guys speak, we we kind of look at it like, okay, they, they're no, they're on to something and they're and they're trying to promote something. Is that something you feel compelled to do because of your HBCU experience? Has it always been in you? Has the has um, college changed your view of it at all? Um, I mean, it's not something that I feel like I have to do. I know, like whenever we talk about things that are going on in classes, um, I usually just sit and listen at first because a lot of those, uh, you no, know, everyone's from all over the place. So especially in like my sports journalism class I usually just sit and listen um those guys in the class are just they're older than me but that doesn't really change anything in my mind I like to just listen and see what they're saying and then go off of what they're saying to kind of you know see if I can relate and if I agree you know disagree or if I disagree like disagree with them and see how they go off of that um so I feel like with that it's just basically just you know getting a better knowledge of everything like asking questions and just you know, getting uh, getting everyone's opinions on it. Like, I feel like I'm the type of person that just likes to, I like to sit back and watch first before I do anything. Um, so, I mean, I don't feel like I have to speak about anything. Um, if I, something that I'm passionate about that I think people need to hear, I, you know, I let my voice be heard. Um, but I, I definitely do enjoy hearing other people 
talk and other people like just hear their opinion. So that's something that I truly enjoy. And then what, what do you, what does life look like after Hampton for you? I know it's very early on in your career, um, but you're, you're a very thoughtful, thoughtful lady. And I know you think about, okay, what's the plan look like now? Um, mm-hmm. In journalism, in career, in life, where where do you think you you want to go, and how do you think Hampton will help you to get there? I mean, I'm be honest. From like, from just being like sitting in the house, <laughs> <laughs> wait, just from sitting in the house, um, it allowed me to really think a lot. And mm-hmm. I mean, I feel like just sitting and you know not really having anything to do. You know, I've had these dreams before of like, oh, I want to have like a TV show. I want to do this, do that. But once, you know, I just thinking to myself, like, I feel like that's something I do want to do, but that's not something I want to do right away. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm not really sure what I want to do right away. um, But I do know, like, down the future in my life, like, I want to coach some, do want to have the TV show. So I I just want to do everything. Like, I, I can't. I'm a person that I just always have to be active, like mm-hmm. always have to be active, always have to be doing something. I can't sit for too long or I'll get bored. Like I just always got to do something. Um, so I feel like that's going to be me in the future. Like I'm going to want to do one thing, but I'm going to want to do something else at the same time. So right now I'm just, I'm not going to say I like, this is what I want to do just because I know it's going to change. Um, so I'm just really keeping my options open and just having in a free mind, you know, just whatever happens in the future. That's what happens. But at the same time, I'm just going to keep, you know, you know, just expanding like my arsenal of, of what I can do and not set myself to a certain standard and limit. Um, so as of now, it's just whatever I'm thinking at the time as to what I'm going to do. All right. There's a few questions now relative to, to your Hampton experience. Now, you a couple of years ago, you were like on everybody's mind. And you're still a celebrity, but do you miss the time when you were on everybody's mind? ESPN, Good Morning America. Do you ever miss being in front of camera? Because you because you strike me as like you're so quiet, like I can take it or leave it. But do you ever sit um, like, dang, I wish I was on ESPN right now? <laughs> not really. I mean, it happened at such a young age that like I felt like it was just like I wouldn't say traumatizing is the word, but like it was just too much. It was, it was too much, especially at that young of an age. Yeah. Um. And no one, you you can't get prepared for stuff like that. So mm-hmm. like, it's hard to have you know people's attention at that age, and it's like it, it's just not something that you would want a thirteen year old to go through. Um. But no, I I don't wish I was I don't wish I was like still in the spotlight, as they say. Um. I mean, I see, I see everything like on Twitter, Instagram, I even go on TikTok, like I see everything. And a lot of those, you know, kids that are in the spotlight at such a young age, like it's not good for their mental health. Um, and that's something that I'm big on, like making sure like mentally that I'm, I'm good, making sure that I'm, you know, enjoying what I'm doing, enjoying, you know, just spending time with people. Um, so as of now, like, no, I wouldn't want that, but like, before it was, I was just like a, I don't really care type of person. So it didn't really bother me, but looking back, it's like something that like probably make sure like that I was like mentally um, like healthy um, and just really doing things that I wanted to do and not feel like, like I was just pushed into the spotlight and just doing whatever people wanted me to do. Yeah. But no, nah, I don't really wish I was there, especially like now with like the cancel culture and stuff like, you do you say something that people don't enjoy and next thing you know you're canceled because you, you don't have here. the same yeah you don't have the same opinion so i i i don't want to do that right now i hear that um you mentioned southern is there a hbcu campus that you've been to that you say you know what outside of hampton this is my favorite campus um i've only been to bethune cookman in dell state Okay. Um. So, I, I mean, out of those two, I, I really enjoyed Del State just because I feel like I know, you know more people, people there. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But I mean, no, I've been to North Carolina A&T, but that was just for a softball game, so I didn't really get to see the campus. And I'm tripping. I'm tripping. I've been to Norfolk too. Um. <laughs> I 
Let's get uh, right down the street. <laughs> yeah. Um, probably, probably Delphi, just because I have friends up there and I spent more time there. Um, but it, it's, they're, a lot of them are very nice in, in their own ways. Um, but I feel like I can't go to a too big of a campus or I'll get lost. Like mm-hmm. I struggled my first week and a half. I struggled at Hampton trying to find my classes. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, they're all, they're all great. They're all great. And I hope that the people that go there, they enjoy how great their campus is. Is there a school that even just a year and a half in at this point where you say, you know what? I got love for all HBCUs, but I, when we play, I really want to beat the brakes off y'all. And you better not say Howard. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> um, I mean, really, just anybody. Um, you gonna beat them all? Yeah, you. That's that's like the mentality that I have is just going into in, every game like we're gonna destroy you. Like basically, you shouldn't be on the field with us. Um, <sighs> but like when we beat uh, Dell State last year, um, <laughs> I had to let my friend that. know. <laughs> yeah, I had to let him know. Like, listen, we beat y'all. Like, don't talk. Don't talk to me about it. Um, but yeah, really, it's just like whoever steps on the field, like you're going to get the same treatment that everyone else gets, no matter who's on your team, what team, like where you, where you're from. If I know anybody, everyone gets the same treatment. Really. And then just a final question. And again, we appreciate your time. If there's one thing that you could tell um, anybody, not just a top flight athlete like you, but anybody who's really trying to consider an HBCU and is really thinking about it, What's the top advice that you would say? Uh, you know, you said do your research, obviously, but is there a part of that research that 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 weighs heavier for you? Um, would you say your family should be a big part of it? What's the number one thing that you would tell somebody to 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 really look for when choosing a school? Um, I would say if you're an athlete, um, even if it's a PWI or even a uh, HBCU, especially a PWI, look at the roster and see if you see anyone that's your height. Uh, like around your area, um, the same race as you look at that, like that plays a big factor. Cause if you try to go to a school and there's only one black kid on the team, like you gotta, you gotta think about your, like what you're going to do. Like if you can really, you know, play with this team. Um, so that's one thing I really, really tell people to look at, like check their roster out. Um, picture yourself on campus as if you were a regular student and not an athlete. And try not to think about these big name schools, because um, if you're good enough, these scouts and these teams will find you no matter what school you go to. Um, so don't try to go to a big school because uh, they have they had this many people go to the NBA or to the league or whatever. Um, but really, really think about, you know, if this school can make you become a better person, not just player, but a better person. Um, that's like one one of the biggest things I always, you know, tell friends that are younger. Like, is, is this school going to make you a better person and not just a better player? And um, I think that hopefully that sticks with them because you want to be the best person you can be. And if you're the best person you can be, then you can be the best player you can be that that'll just follow right after.